speed sensor. This is coming on our sync pulse input 4. Now the turbo speed sensor on a Borg Warner turbo is drilled into the compressor cover, counts the number of compressor blades that pass over the sensor. It can give us an idea of our shaft speed on our turbo. We can figure out if we're over spinning the turbo, if we're looking at the performance of the turbo. It can keep us away from um, the overspin condition which can explode the, the compressor wheel, the turbine wheel if they overspin too much. And uh, we can take some action with some things. With boost control we can start to reduce our duty cycle if we start to overspin the turbo. We'll talk about that when we get into the boost control tutorial video. We're way away from that. But let's go and set this up here. So we're going to type in turbo speed. We should find that that is going to be an input here. So we'll type in here turbo speed. And we do see turbo speed sensor. So that's going to allow us to set this up. This is going to be a sync pulse input 4. That's our last SPI 4 that we have available. Now this sensor is going to be a hall effect. It should be a falling edge. Pull up is going to be enabled here. So we'll leave all of that alone. Display, we won't worry about this. Calibration, I believe the Borg Warner has 14 blades on the compressor. I'll double triple check that, but off the top of my head, on this 8374, um, I believe that is to be the case. In diagnostics, we don't need to do anything with that. Um, so this should be okay. Click apply. Now notice it is giving me the air here, just as it was when I set up um, looking at my generic input here for my meth failsafe. Now it looks like it's green right now, so it might be just something um, quirky with the software as we're filming here and it just doesn't like it so we'll collapse that maybe that'll go away as we keep going on all right let's go back into our list now the last thing we have here is a Bosch knock sensor found here on pin B21 so if we go back into our knock control let's find that right down here under knock control actually under knock detection so this is found on the default pin location of B21 so this has a Bosch flat response knock sensor now if we go in here we do need to go into knock detection and talk about this. We see the knock frequency here is set for 3300 3, hertz. Now on a rotary engine, um, or on a piston engine I should say, we can go into an online calculator, type in the bore size for the piston, figure out what the appropriate knock frequency should be to populate into here to get things started with. Now on a rotary engine, the knock frequency is anywhere between 3300 to 3600 when we want to work with the knock control. We're going to be working and setting all of this up to calibrate and guide us in how far we can push our spark timing. The number one thing that's going to kill a rotary engine is knock. If we have knock occur, we can damage the engine. So this is especially important to get this right compared to a piston engine. Now, piston engine is still important, but a rotary can't start to tolerate even a little bit of knock. So we need to have something in place to essentially cover ourselves to make sure that it's going to have a watch eye on what's going on. Now, we're still going to watch it during pools, but we'll find that we want to have our knock frequencies being around this range. I'm going to raise this up to, let's just say, 3400. Again, the range should be anywhere from 3300 to 3600 hertz. That's pretty close. As long as you're in that, that kind of range of frequency, you should be okay. So Mazda actually documented what the knock frequency was supposed to be for a rotary engine many, many years ago. It's actually in Mazda technical documentation, so that's where this exists from. I don't know any other way to calculate it for a rotary engine other than to use the documented Mazda settings. So we have our knock frequency set here at 3400 hertz. Uh, the start angle, negative 20, and duration here, 60 degrees, should all be sufficient. So I'm not even going to run a momentary knock, so we actually try to make it ping and then test down here what the knock detection is going to do. I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to run with this because I know it's accurate, and I've done it on other rotary engines with the Haltech Elite system, so I'm confident that this is going to work. Make sure, we, again, we covered that. So that is a default location for the pin, and we've noted it here. So Bosch flat, flat response knock sensor. We got rid of the OEM sensor. It should be a bit more accurate. Now, there is a TACO output that was wired on the output for DPO1. We're not using the TACO output. I don't even know where the wire goes to on the harness, so we're going to ignore that. The boost solenoid that's controlling the Borg Warner solenoid that's built into the EFR turbo, that's actually on our DPO3. Let's go back in here and set that up. Let's jump in here to boost control. And we're going to find, if we look down here, the connection here is wrong. So it's not DPO, DPO1, it's DPO3. So digital pulse output 3. Activation state is low. It's ground pulsing the solenoid. Uh, we find there is one solenoid. There's no enable arming switch. Uh, there's a trim and scramble. So we're going to be working in, uh, we're actually going to be working in, we'll do closed loop here. Uh, controller method, we have wastegate, pressure, manifold pressure, and boost pressure. We're working with manifold pressure here. Um, output frequency, 33 hertz is fine. 0 to 100% duty cycle is fine. Control point offset of 7, max derivative 14. Um, Overboost offset, 2.2 PSI, that should be fine. We'll leave off our quick spool for right now, just to kind of get things going. We'll turn off our long term, make sure that's off. 
and corrections. We will turn on some corrections here, but we can't do anything yet. So we're just kind of get things going. Again, most important thing here is the output is configured. So let's move back into our list and take a look. Thermofan. So we have two different cooling fans on this engine. We're actually controlling them independent of each other. Cooling is a really big deal on a rotary engine. They build a ton of thermal heat, so we need to make sure it's cool. So our thermofan one, or the primary fan, is going to be found on DPO4. So let's go and configure that. So we need to go and jump down to thermofan, which should be already enabled here in the file right here. We need to go and set this output here. So we're going to go and set this to our... Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.